Good morning and welcome. Special welcome to the folks who are watching at home. It's good for us to be together for worship. I uh, wanted to start with a prayer request. Ruth Pendry died this past week, so please keep her friends and family in your prayers. Uh, Announcement-wise, yesterday our confirmands affirmed their baptism, so please remember to keep these young men and women in your prayers as well. Also, this is the last week for Sunday school until the fall, so thank you to all the teachers and the helpers for their time and energy and love this past year. Please be aware that June 5th, that's in two weeks, we move to our summer worship schedule. Sunday worship begins at 9, and then uh, Saturday worship remains at 5. The usher and lector signups for June, I think, and July have been posted on the office door next to the drinking fountain. Please take a look at those and volunteer as you're able. We also invite you to join us on Saturday, May 28th. That's a week from yesterday following worship for our first game night and appetizers. So bring your favorite game, a board game, a card game, and an appetizer to share. We'll meet down in the church basement, and it should be a very fun evening. Our faith practice this week was from Psalm 58. This psalm is a prayer for vengeance. To what animal does the psalmist compare the wicked who go astray? from the womb who err from their birth speaking lies. Are you looking that one up, Mina? It's in verse 4. Go ahead. Yes, they have venom like the venom of a serpent. Very good. And I forgot to put out a peanut butter cup, but I'll get you one. And our readings each week are sequential, so this coming week we'll be reading Psalm 59. Let us prepare our hearts, our minds, and our spirits for worship.
Will you please stand for the confession and forgiveness? If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God who is faithful and just and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Peace and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Peace and 
Bountiful God, you gather your people into your realm, and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word, that empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from the 16th chapter of Acts. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace the following day to Napolis and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we, was, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my house. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from the book of Revelation. In the spirit of the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and the lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, 
nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him, and they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night, and they will need no lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, what a womb shall we go? The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Judas, not Iscariot, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, and my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. To tell you the truth, I just don't see it. In our gospel reading, Jesus tells the disciples that he has left them with peace. As modern day disciples, we are heirs to this promise, so that would include us as well. But if you look around the world these days, you might wonder where is this peace that Jesus left? I'm not necessarily seeing peace. I mean, if you look at the world or even at the greater Toledo area, you don't really see peace. You don't have to watch the news for very long to be reminded that there's a war in Ukraine. Gang violence in Central America, gang violence in Toledo. Last week, some guy went on a hate-filled rampage killing people in a grocery store in Buffalo. None of that sounds like peace to me. And for those people, Maybe some right here at St. John who are struggling with problems with their spouse or their children, maybe even a fight about whether or not to come to church this morning. I certainly hope there's not a, news level, a newsworthy level of violence, but there may not be much peace in your own home either. So what is this peace that Jesus gives us, and where can we find it? Jesus does say, I give you peace, but he goes on to say, I do not give to you as the world gives. That's a clue. Before we can answer our question, what is the peace that Jesus gives, we need to step away from our common understanding of peace. The peace that Jesus gives is not necessarily the absence of war or violence, and it doesn't always mean that we'll be without suffering or problems in our lives. We know this is true because the peace that Jesus gives comes in a time of betrayal and arrest. 
His message of peace comes in the midst of beating and crucifixion. Hanging on a cross is not where we would normally experience a source of peace. That's an example of hatred and violence directed at an innocent man. Yet with Jesus, it's the origin of peace. I do not give to you as the world gives. So with Jesus, there's always a twist. Peace is different. Peace is more than what we would expect. The peace of Jesus is not the absence of violence. Rather, it's a state of being, a sense of wholeness, a spiritual well-being, if you will, a sense of mental and spiritual harmony. The peace we have in Jesus is a gift that pertains to our relationship with God, our self, and with others. We can see this peace in fellowship. This peace can see us through the hard times. This peace is a benefit of our relationship with God. While doing chaplaincy at OSU Hospital in Columbus, I had the chance to talk to a woman who was a long-term patient. Upon hearing that I was a chaplain, she had only one question. Why is God making me suffer here? She wanted the peace that Jesus gives, but she didn't know what that peace is. Now, she told me that she never went to church. She didn't need to. She was happy with her relationship with God on her terms. She didn't need someone else telling her how to be religious. Sometimes she would watch the preachers on television. She read enough of the Bible to know that Jesus seemed like a pretty nice guy. She prayed some, especially since she'd been sick. She prayed a lot, but a lot of good it did her. She'd been praying for weeks, and she still wasn't better yet. Why should she go to church when she could read the Bible and pray at home? Well, peace, I told her. She was missing the peace of being in relationship with God. Worshiping and praying is only part of what we do on Sunday morning. We also come together for communion. Yes, sharing the body and blood of Christ, but also fellowship with our Christian brothers and sisters. We can have a personal relationship with God, but we also need a communal relationship with God as well. Throughout the entire Bible, we see that the work of God is done through human beings. When you only worship at home, you're missing the opportunity to participate in the work of God through His people. And you're missing the opportunity to do God's work for His people. What this woman realized, sitting in the hospital alone, was that through her private worship, she was missing out on something. The fellowship of being with God's people. She was missing out on peace. The peace that Jesus gives is not the absence of suffering and pain. It's the realization that we're not alone in our suffering and pain. God is there with us. And God is there with us in the fellowship of believers. Community is part of the peace that Jesus brings. Peace is also knowing that no matter how bad we mess things up or how many times we mess up, Jesus doesn't give up on us. I've shared before that in college I was a criminal justice major. I was talking with my father about the rather frightening idea of heading off to seminary. In criminal justice, I only had to worry about the state's laws. And for me, those weren't too difficult to keep. I didn't have any trouble not stealing or murdering anyone. But at seminary, and as a pastor, I would have to deal with God's laws. It seems to me that God's laws are stricter. It's more difficult to love your neighbor than it is to not take their stuff. That may be true, my dad said, but God forgives quicker than the government does. He was right, of course. God forgives. 
and there we find peace. There is peace in knowing the grace and forgiveness of God. There is peace in salvation that comes through our relationship with God. There is peace that Jesus gives, a peace that comes to us through the promises of God. And this is very different from keeping a bunch of laws. I saw a prayer floating around on the internet that fits well here. It's called, May the Lord Make My Day a Happy One. Not by shielding me from sorrow and pain, but by strengthening me to bear it when it comes. Not by taking hardship from me, but by taking all cowardice and fear from me as I meet hardship. Not by making my path easy, but by making me sturdy enough to tread any path. Not by granting me unbroken sunshine, but by keeping my face bright even in the shadows. Not by making my life always pleasant, but by showing me where others and God will need me most. And by making me passionate to be there and to help. O oh Lord, make my day a happy one. That's a good summary of what the peace of Jesus is all about. That's how I experience the peace of Jesus. Not by making my life always pleasant, not by taking away hardship and pain, but by giving me confidence in His presence, His grace and forgiveness, and the strength and the courage to be there and to help others experience peace as well. Then, through the peace of Jesus in our lives, then we work for the absence of war and violence. Through Jesus' gift of peace to us, we are able to work for peace in the world. Amen.
together, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Give a vision of increase and abundant harvest for farmers, laborers, and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, confound their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, or peace. Today we pray especially for Audrey, Marilyn, Carolyn, and Lucy. For Lauren, Betty, the friends and family of Ruth Pendry, and all of those we name before you now. Create places filled with hospitality, where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities, who assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people. Accomplish your will through their efforts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts, where we remember our baptism and welcome others into the community of saints. We give you thanks and celebrate also those in our congregation who have affirmed their baptism this weekend. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. We're not passing the offering plates, but we still pause in our worship to recognize the importance to our spiritual lives of giving. So whether we give in the offering plate by the door or online giving or mailing in a check or some other way, the important thing is not the method, but rather that we are joyfully offering what we have to God as a sign of thanksgiving and faith. 
And I also wanted to share, I forgot in the announcements, but there is a noisy offering for Vacation Bible School today. So next to the offering plates, there are also the gold buckets that are welcoming your change. So anything you put in there will help Vacation Bible School, which is in the second week of June. Let us join together in our offering prayer. Merciful God, everything in heaven and on earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation. Through Jesus Christ, amen. should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna holy, gracious, and merciful God. Everything is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for your promise and presence, which has sustained the faithful in this and every generation. Above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. On the night of
night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and his ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we cry. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all of your promises may come to us and your whole creation. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, O God, now and forever. Joined together in Christ, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Will you please stand? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. <laughs> pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's peace, everyone. Have a blessed week.